lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. What's going on, my good people? Charles McCutcheon here, your favorite entrepreneur. Check this out. I got something for y'all today. I got something for y'all today. Y'all, I've been on this journey for so long, and it's still beautiful. I'm still learning, and I'm still being a student of the game. Y'all know mainly I miss the real estate. Mainly. That's where I like to stay. Real estate is a life. So, those who don't know, my name is Charles McCutcheon. I'm a best-selling author. I have a nonprofit helping homeless veterans. Business credit is my thing. I have the government contracts under there. So I do speaking engagements across the country and so much more. But I'm here to, you know, give y'all really a sense of finance. And, you know, with everything going on today, I have to talk about that. I have to talk about what I'm doing and how I'm alleviating or trying to mitigate the risk of everything that's going on. So I want to welcome you to Charles's Corner. You know, looking at everything in the in the world today <laughs> and what we're doing, uh, just, I get two different answers from people when I'm, when I'm talking about the state of the economy. So, you know, the state of the economy is going to affect us all, you know, one way or the other. So you might as well look at it and not try to act like it's not happening. So this is just for me personally, I'm not giving out any legal advice. That's not what I do. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a CPA. None of the above. I'm not. You know, I'm just giving. I'm giving you my experience, and I want you to go research everything for yourself, only because that's what you should be doing anyway. So my experience leads me to go all the way back to 2000 and let's say maybe six, seven, eight. You know. Uh, still doing real estate. I was a loan officer at that time, cranking out loan after loan after. I think people was giving dogs loans. It was just so good back there as a loan officer. They they did, you know, with, as far as the money is concerned, they was giving Lottie, Dottie, and everybody money. I was telling you, I saw people coming in that was making like $50,000 a year, they getting five hundred thousand dollars two day away, three hundred thousand. I'm just sitting there like, how is this even possible? Like, how are you gonna pay this? And back in the day, and, and I'm, I'm bringing, I'm taking you somewhere. So back in the day, they're giving out these big old loans, jumbos. They're giving out three fifty, four hundred, five hundred. And I'm looking at people's debt to income ratio, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, the people that I work with personally. I would tell them, I don't think you should do it. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you might get what they call, uh, they have different loans out there, like a variable rate to where, you know, it, it goes up and down. Then they have the fixed rate. Then they have the, hey, why don't you just pay the interest right now? And then in six or seven years, you can pay, it's going to jump up. So that's how they get people, you know, the interest only, you paying, you know, pennies. Seems like you're like, wow, we can just pay interest, and everybody talks themselves into it and say, yeah, we just gonna pay this interest. We good, and by you know, we'll have what we need in a couple of years, so then we can just go ahead and get a fix. I guarantee you, people be doing that because they say percent or something. Yeah, we just pay this little two percent, and then we'll change it over later. I'm telling you, later never comes. It doesn't come, family. This is I see it happening today. That's why I brought it up. So right now, like on a weekly, I speak to underwriters. I just got to talking to one today, and I speak to lenders, right? And they saying even realtors, they saying it's it's like a smorgasbord out here. We killing the game right now. You get a loan, and you get a loan. But see, the people that's getting loans right now are the people that are qualified. There's less people that are qualified than are not. So the people out there right now that's looking for houses, 
oh, they qualified and they get out. You better believe it. Talking to the lenders, the lenders have changed their criteria so much so that a lot of people who may have been at that 620, you may not be getting the house. You just might not because they're changing all the algorithms and now you got to have this and that. And the same thing with uh, underwriters. So underwriters are getting stuff daily, daily to say, now you, you used to do this yesterday, but now you can't do it today. And so they have to deny people. But a lot of people going in are qualified. So this couple uh, just went in. They got a $500,000 home. More money. They killing it. But check it, though. They get the income. is It's tight, y'all. It's tight. One missed paycheck, one missed paycheck, and it's going down. But let me tell you what my experience is. I've been doing real estate for so long, and I get people to say, we're going to be fine. Everything is going to just bounce back the way it used to be. But the only thing I'm asking people is, you know, look at the unemployment rate, and it's going to go higher. That's just, you know, nature to be. Uh, look at people are, quote, unquote, fur- furloughed, and furloughed just means you may not be going back. You, you're you sitting at home now or you getting your hustle on like we all should be doing anyway. And so couple that with the, uh, the Fed lowering the rate so much so that it just injected, like, everything. They injected billions into the economy. And then you look at us as a country saying, hey, no, we'll just put another $2 trillion Put another two trillion, Jim. Yeah, we need some money. How easy is that, family? How easy is it just to print two trillion dollars backed by absolutely nothing? Like our money's not backed by anything. So it's like, hey, anybody else want two trillion? I'll just go, hey, Jim, another two trillion, buddy. You see how quick they did that? That's quick. <laughs> I am a person that goes to the experts. That's what I do. In every industry I work with, I go to the experts and get the the right answers because I'm not the expert in the economy. That's not what I do. But the economists, they say something different because they look at numbers. That's all they look at is numbers. And they say to me, to Charles, the numbers don't look favorable. You know, it don't look, it doesn't look good for us because if you keep, now, just let's use common sense right quick. So, you have, in a sense, no money in your account. We we'll just keep it like that. But you got checks. But you just keep writing people checks. But you have no money in your account, but you just don't keep writing checks. What's going to happen? From the economists, they said eventually, well, we already bankrupt, but eventually it is going to implode itself. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good to me. So I get a lot of people, somebody just called me up yesterday, hey, Charles, Let's talk real estate. Okay, let's go. So should I get a house right now? I told them no. I told them no only because this is going to be something that we haven't seen before. And I know some people say, no, we're going to be okay. But then I asked the question, have we ever went through a, uh, a like a shutdown where everybody was in the house? I mean, has that ever happened? Have we ever had, you know, we had millions of millions of people that, you know, haven't been employed, but now we're reaching numbers that we haven't reached before. Has that ever happened? We have been through economic turmoil where we, you know, the stock market crash, the housing market crash and stuff like that. So we've been through that. So if we haven't been anybody say that we're going to be okay, I don't get that part. Like you, we haven't been here. So you don't really know, but you want people to say, no, we're going to be fine. For me, I'm saying, no, we're not going to be fine. I need everybody to prepare for the worst because we don't know what that is. That's all I'm saying. And then me and this guy was going back and forth, and we was going back and forth in this group. It's probably got 100,000-plus people. We're talking real estate. And he said, Charles, you you, you know, you don't uh, – that's, that's wrong because of this, this, and this. And he had a few good pointers in there. But I said, my man, we haven't been through this before. So you're telling people we're going to be okay, but you can't give any background or documentation to say we're going to be okay. Now, if it was just like 08, 2009, 
I would, I would 100% agree with him, but it's not. It's different. And so then he's tried to throw his, uh, he said, I've been doing this for years, stuff at me, and then I did the same thing. And, you know, I'm like, well, we're going to find out. <laughs> we're going. Are you willing to put money up for this or no? But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be bad family. So what I'm telling people to do right now, don't buy don't buy anything. Hold what you got. You know, I just if you're looking to buy a house, I wouldn't buy. That's just me personally. If you want to buy, go buy. No big deal. There's going to be so many foreclosures. There's gonna be so many people getting kicked out of apartments because of what we had already with COVID nineteen, and a lot of people couldn't pay, and a lot of people could pay, and those that could pay, some of them didn't pay, and then some that didn't pay, the landlords knew that they could pay. So now, just in the state of Virginia, it's probably a couple cities, we have 800 pending cases of landlords getting their renters to get out. They're about to go to court. I don't know what that means, but it's a, it's a whole heck of a lot of them. And that was hundreds a month ago. I don't know what it is today. I don't follow that. So it's going to get ugly. And a lot of those landlords are, you know, they run their own stuff. So you got some people out there that are older that their only income was the income coming in from renting to these renters. So if they can't pay and then, you know, you got the – the mortgage company beating down their back, it, it's going to be a hot mess, y'all. I'm a, it's going to be a domino effect. I see it. I, I mean, the writing's on the wall. Let me tell you what's going to happen. A lot of people are going to make a lot of bad mistakes, and it's going to be, oh, man, it's going to be bad. That's all I can say. And then on the flip side of that, there's going to be those who said, I'm not buying right now. I'm stacking my money. I'm getting my business credit so I don't have to put up a personal guarantee. So then when it does crash and they got all these foreclosures out there, you getting properties for pennies on the dollar. Y'all hear me when I say that? You getting property for pennies on the dollar. And if you keep coming back to this doggone thing with me, Charles' Corner at 6 p.m. on Mondays, I'm going to learn you. I ain't going to teach you nothing. I'm going to learn you because I'm going to actively do it, and I'm going to tell people exactly what I'm doing in the real estate world. And I'm already putting it out to real estate folks exactly what I'm going to do because there's going to be foreclosures. There's going to be bankruptcy, without a doubt. Nobody can sell me on this. It won't happen. It's going to happen. Now, when it does happen, are you prepared? Are you ready? That's the key right there. You can under, you can have all the money in the world. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't know what it is you're doing with it, does it even matter? Like, it doesn't matter because the education, if it's not there, you're going to lose, my friend. You will lose. And that's what's going to happen. It's happening right now, even without – the big foreclosure dropping and everything like that. I see people overpaying for properties for thirty thousand dollars, and they said, "Yeah, yeah, I lost out on this one, but you know, I still got the property." Yeah, okay. I mean, if you got thirty thousand just to throw away, I guess you did get the property, and now when you sell it, you're gonna lose again. So I'm gonna tell y'all right now, it's coming. This is not a scare tactic. I don't get down like that. This is just information that I know because I've been through this stuff before. You know, it's not a secret. It's just going to happen. But it's just like getting prepared. And if you're out there and you are a W-2 worker, I would ask you to keep stacking your money, pay your bills down and everything like that, because this is what's going to happen. And I see it every year, every year. And it starts uh, maybe November. And people be on social media, and they say, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. I've been working at my company for 15 years, and they just let me go out of the blue. And I'm just looking like, okay. Nobody, I'm just being real, nobody's expendable. 
I guarantee you they can find a warm body if you were to leave. I guarantee you they can. Mm-hmm. They can find a warm body if you leave. It can happen. So from me to you, it's more of get your house in order. And I've been preaching that for years. Like, it's coming, but, you know, a lot of stuff fall on deaf ears, and then, you know, you can't tell grown people nothing. Some people are going to do what they want to do, and then when they find out for themselves, it's going to be up close and personal. Now it's like, what am I going to do? So hope you all got something out of that. <laughs> so what's going on with me right now? I just check this out, y'all. I'm just telling all my personal business. It's not really personal. So I just got a phone call. Oh, no, no, I got an inbox. I got an inbox on Facebook from the TV station, and they asked me, can they have a conversation with me? So I inboxed back, and I was like, well, if we had a conversation, where is this conversation going? I mean, is it, is it going to be featured anywhere? They was like, no, 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 no. I just wanted to get a general conversation with you on the development that you're doing. Now I'm thinking I should have posted the development, but I did it anyway. And so they're saying, uh, I just told them that when we get ready, then we'll, then I'll be able to, you know, go on TV and do all that stuff. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to jump the gun because we, we still got stuff to do over there. You know, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't have some stuff set up yet. So I told her I got. I got one thing I need to do before I start letting everybody, you know, in and seeing and looking all, you know, checking out our stuff. So it's not all the way done yet. It's not all the way complete. We got a good portion of it done. I would say we might be at the 80% mark, maybe even 75. It doesn't matter. But, yeah, we're going to get the development going. So I bring up the development, and I want to talk about this today, and I'm I'm about to talk about this in a couple of different groups, social media, off social media. There is a meme, or not a meme, it's a picture. It's a picture going around uh, on social media, and it's a town down in Georgia. And the town is, you know, but so big, and I think it's selling for $1.7 million. So everybody... I think I've gotten this thing probably seven times, seven different people, people tagging me on social media, Charles, let's get it, let's do this, and I'm just sitting here just like, okay. So I'm listening to all these people, people coming up with theories and how are we going to do it, we need to get a lawyer, we need to get this and that, and who's going to control the money, and it is just going crazy. That's what it is. I know some of y'all saw it. You had to see it. It's out there. If you haven't seen it yet, you will. That's what's going to happen. So this is what I say to those who are, uh, you find somebody who is in that position who's telling you all this stuff, tell them to hold on and pump their brakes for one second. There's a lot to go along with buying an entire town much less just buying a piece of real estate like a single family and much less buying like a, a, a motel, hotel. You know, there there's a lot to go along with this stuff, family. And I'm not the bearer of bad news by any stretch of the imagination. That's not what I do. But I am a realist, and, and I look at different things. So I'm going to give you all some of my key takeaways that I think about when I'm just talking real estate, I mean, like we're doing this development, we're doing just one building. To me, you got key takeaways when you when you're talking about that. And my my thing I always look at, well, this is in no particular order, just information. So what I look at is like, is there room to expand down there? Because I forgot how many acres it was. And I don't. I, I'm gonna throw out 40 acres, but. I don't know how many acres it was. Like, is it room to expand down there? And it was like I forgot the name of it, but how hard is it? How hard is it to get to that town? Like, are you going down dirt roads and back roads and just trying to figure it out to get there? 
the other thing I think about is, is it a ghost town? Like, and I know people live there right now. I forgot how many people actually live there. But is it in proximity to things like roadways, community centers? My biggest, biggest, biggest thing is airports. I need to be close to an airport, and I'm sure a lot of people prefer to be close to an airport. What about the plans for the schools? Is there hospitals down there, or you got to travel an hour just to get to the hospital? What about public transportation? Is there anything like that? Infrastructure. The infrastructure, are y'all sitting on stable land? Is it is it like land that can't really be built on? Is uh, What does the water look like? Is there, y'all have your own water? Is it coming from somewhere else? Is it good water? Is it, you know, I, I shoot. It's so, my goodness, so much. So people just want to dive in, and I get it. I, I'm the same way. I, I like to, but I, I'm a researcher as well. So uh, the other thing is, you know, like, who's going to fund this thing? Where is the money coming from? People have to have jobs. Are they working outside the city? Nine times out of ten, I'm sure. Cities, how far is the next city over? And when you look at the neighboring cities, can you go check on there? They, every city has like a 10-year plan to see what they're wanting to do. So I would look and see, are they planning on building, like going towards that city? Because it kind of helps out to you to have, instead of going 48 minutes to an hour to get to some grocery store, can you cut it down to 20 minutes or something like that? So what I did is I looked at it. It's been on the market for like seven years. And that's information I received from somebody who actually lived down there. They used to live there. They don't live there no more. So it's so many factors outside of just that that, that you know, that's always talked about and people trying to figure it out. And so I will tell you all, I'm going to tell you all this first before I uh, conclude what I'm talking about now. So this is what I'm doing. This is my way of giving back. So development out there, right now I have uh, two different entities that want to provide $200 million apiece. So right now we're sitting on $400 million. Uh, the development is $200 million. And what we're going to do is I'm going out to get more funding. And so my goal is to have over a billion dollars and it's called letter of intent. So I have this billion dollars. I take the letter from the city that I have, and I go to the bank with it, a black bank. So I'm going to a black bank because I want to to the CEO of that bank, and I want to ask them, can I put the money in their account? Because I know that banks can, like, 10 times, 20 times the money that they get in and loan that out. So I really want to get on the phone. Well, not on the phone. It's going to be on a Zoom call with the black banker, the whoever the CEO is of the bank, myself, and a lot of black business owners. And I need the black banker to tell the business owners how to submit applications to get funded. That's what I need. So we're going to create that group. It's going to be probably on Facebook. Uh, We're going to create that group, and it may not be on Facebook. It may be somewhere else, but anyway. And I'm just going to ask people, you know, who's been qualified. And if they're not qualified, we're going to take the money out and go to the next bank. Somebody wants $60 million, $50 million, $100 million. Somebody wants that money. You can best believe that. One avenue I'm taking, I'm just giving you all my business. The other avenue that I'm going down is because I want people to invest together, all right? I want people to invest together. So what I'm doing, I have a SEC attorney, and that's a Securities Exchange Commission attorney. And what we're going to do is he's going to create the paperwork, set it up, and we're going to create a regulation, a Tier 2 type crowdfunding platform, what that means is we can crowdfund up to fifty million, and anybody can actually invest with us. So you can invest five hundred, a thousand, but we're going to come up with a minimum. 
But I don't like the minimum because a lot of people will shoot for $50 if you allow them to. So there's going to be a minimum. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a max or what have you, but we can only have $50 million in there. And so with the different developments I have around the country, I'm just going to use that funding to invest into those different types of developments and then have it come with a training element to it to where people can learn actually what it is they're investing in and learn how to do real estate, learn how to get private money, learn how to do business credit, learn how to do a multifamily, learn what it is to get land, learn what it is to understand what it takes to buy a town, learn what it is to do a development and break it down so we have a training component, we have an investment component, and then start adding services around that on an educational level so we can train people up and move like that. My name is Charles McCutcheon. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. I'm hungry, y'all. My ribs are touching, and I'm going for it. And I'm not going to let nobody stop me. Miss Kimmy, I want to say thank you to you for giving me this platform way back when with Elation Magazine to even start and then Elation Radio and beyond. We have so a big family in Elation, and they're just providing the content and information that we need, giving us that heat. If you get on these Elation Radio calls, y'all about to get that heat. I'm telling you, if we going we going to pick you up. We're going to heal you. We're going to give you some financial advice. We're going to talk. It's all aspects, all aspects of your life. You get on the Elation Radio, and we're going to give you something that you can work with, something you can leave with, something you can research, something you can have, and you can give to somebody else. All right? So this is what I'm going to do. If y'all need me, I'm all over social media. Y'all, I'm not hard to find. Charles McCutcheon, just look me up. I'm not hard to find. Uh, if you inbox me, I may take a little bit of time. If you uh, send me an email, it may take a little bit of time. But, you know, I'm human like everybody else. I'm at charlesmspeaks at yahoo.com. That's C-H-A-R-L-E-S. The letter M is in Mike Speaks, S-P-E-A-K-S, Sierra Papa Echo Alpha, Kilo Sierra at yahoo.com. That's that military coming out of me. <laughs> charlesmspeaks at yahoo.com. Get in touch. Whatever. I have the, I have a lot of content, y'all. I can uh, send you to my hiddengymconsulting.com if you want to go there and grab downloads and all that kind of stuff. H-I-D-D-E-N, like we're hiding but hidden. Gym, G-E-M, consulting, C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G.com. Hidden Gym, there's so much content on there, I just keep adding to it. I got videos. You can go there and get some business credit information. You can get some credit information and download the 609 forms. That's free. You can get... Uh, the real estate download, the FISBO sheet that you can use to do real estate, that's free. You can get the business credit on there, that's free. So it's just content. I put so much, it's some paid content, some free content. It's just information, family. That's all it is. So, dear Father, you say we're two or more gathered, you will be in the midst. We enter into your presence and ask that you touch us, dear Lord. Please give us the love and the confidence that you have. Help us to be the best version of ourselves, and I ask that you continue to move us along this journey. I pray for everybody's strength. I pray for everybody's unity, and I pray for empowerment. Dear Father, we know that everything happens in your time. We know that you're all-knowing. We must believe and trust in you. Please ensure that we manifest the destiny and the glory that you've already set forth in our lives, Father God. Ensure that we use up the territory you've already given us, dear Lord. I pray for everyone to gain more wisdom so that you know without a doubt that joy comes in the morning. In your name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. And y'all take it easy and catch me out there because I'm your favorite entrepreneur, Charles McCutcheon. Shout out D on the track, Paint Music Media. Shout out DJ Lee Productions, and I'm Al Ken. But if you a game changer, got my yeah, head yeah. I'm a game changer, 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 I'm a
I'm a game changer. 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 I'm a